Why hello there adventurers and agoraphobes alike, Shams Nelson here from Fantastic Anatomy and in this new series we're going to be creating the world of Chibu which is an exciting uh, land of large-headed adventurers uh, of a fantasy variety and um, this video was inspired by uh, crazy and lazy like mad <laughs> who asked for more um, map drawing videos so I was like okay well I was gonna design this world so I decided I'll make a video series out of it and to do so my main plan my plan is to draw so the background well I'll get into the background of the world cheap in a middle, minute but I'm gonna draw all of these and then I'm gonna use the tectonic plate method that I mentioned in another video each of these is a different landmass to bring them together at the end so we'll randomly roll and I know this is out of order but all the numbers are there and that's what's important so you randomly roll these are all the um, peoples that and these are tentative names on the official Wizards of the Coast dice so let's go ahead and do that so we can get to drawing one what an interesting beginning the jungle people the jungle people alright so all these are based on real life um, cultures so actually the first thing I was gonna do is gonna go to map and I haven't forgotten I will explain to you the background the world of Chibu but let's get into some drawing map making and world building too so um, let's go ahead and search for uh, Indonesia all right so here we go so this uh the jungle people I, I feel like the area I wanted to be based on like the southeast islands so small uh, larger land masses broken up by smaller ones and it's a uh, volcanic in nature so you're gonna see these kind of strips where these were the top of mountain ranges and just the tips are sticking up now because of the rise of sea level and the fall of the mountain ranges we can also have some sparsely scattered islands um, and um, let's look at a little bit of how the rivers come in so maybe we'll see what it looks like satellite view it's kinda cool so we're gonna have bays it seems like where all the rivers tend to flow in here actually no it's an outlet this seems maybe it's bringing down a lot of sediment let me make sure that's actually a river yeah so it looks like um, we can have a mix of different river styles. I like this where it's broken up and there's just a small crack in the middle. So yeah, this looks of shallow waters it seems. Oh, this is interesting. Is that like really deep water? Hmm, I don't know. Alright, cool. So I think I've got a good idea. So do a little research like that. This is kind of cool. We've got a larger land mass here and then... Come on. You can do it. Oh, so those weren't islands. I guess those are so slightly under the water. That could be a cool feature to explore, especially if I add an aquatic, um, hu uh, like humanoid or uh, underwater civilization or something like that, where there are these shelves that are just a certain level under the water. Singapore. You can tell why it's such a. I can see why it's a, such a big port city. Cause look at its location. It's very centralized. All these things. So, all right, let's go ahead and start drawing. Label it jungle people. And this is a pretty big map, so I'll zoom in pretty far. And I'll just pick an arbitrary location. Maybe over here. And we'll start drawing. So I think usually what I like to start with is a mountain range. And since the jungle people so I wanted them to be kind of like um, I ha I, so I have had some thoughts about these these uh, different races my thoughts for the jungle people is I wanted them to have like their central civilization be like the Aztec one so like very um, human sacrifice and like kind of savage tribal cannibals like like evil jungle people if I can be judgmental enough to say that. So I want a big volcano, which is like where their de uh, deity resides, the, which demands the human sacrifices, so he would be thrown in there and stuff. So we got to have a little, like, village up here somewhere. 
some point, so I'll add that later. But for now, so these this is the biggest mountain range. It is the one that got stays above water, and let's have these trail off. So we've got like one or two here. Maybe it has like a swooping, swooping flavor to it. We have a bigger one here. And so the world of Chibi, this is a good map to explain it because there is uh, all these different land lands and peoples were separated by a great sea and a great distance. And um, uh, so they grew, their cultures grew independently of each other. And so they're all very different and they don't know about each other. So they don't have a history together. Then there was the cataclysmic event, um, you know, like a... Uh, a geological event in the magma in the uh, inner inner layers of the earth's um, under the earth's surface and it caused all this tectonic movement and the sea started raging and the continents started moving and they're all gonna smash together so when this first happened it there was like a lot of you know like a big earthquake or whatever and it broke this apart so I'm gonna say that this was a landmass and then it got broken apart so let me actually make a big landmass and then I'll break it apart that could be fun so let's go ahead. I already made those two pieces. I'm just going to let it grow organically and see what it come up with. Oh, I wanted it to be a bigger right now. So let's say that there was this like Aztec type civilization where they had like slaves and all this stuff and they were building all these cool temples and uh you know infrastructure and cities with all the slavery labor so they're doing pretty well so let's say it cracked right here i'm gonna do this while i explain that and then they had this whole place under their thumb then it this cataclysmic thing happened and it happened auspiciously on a um on a day when they were gonna have like this crazy sacrifice and there's like a like a prophetic type character who said like the you know you what you've done is wrong you will pay for this if you don't call off the the great sacrifice and the leader was like no you fool I'm the great leader and then and then this happened so it also broke up the empire on a like spiritual level where now people were like oh we thought he had all this power let's say this little chunk breaks off we thought he had all this power, but, you know, that prophet guy was right. So then these people will get to kind of restart their lives without this evil influence. But I think there still will be like a cult or like a, a base of guys who keep their strength here. And they're always, you know, thinking like, oh, we'll take back the power we once had. But it's kind of harder now that the island is broken up. There's another part of it. So maybe this one won't like broken shifted a little, so it's not too far be kind of cool and uh, let's say this piece breaks off I could have filled it in black so then I would have all those things but it's okay all right so let's just kind of randomly fill these guys in and I feel like there'd be like little islands where they like you know chunks got fell off or got dragged off I'm guessing a lot of people died in that cataclysmic vent, so I'm gonna make this like a puzzle piece, like that was in there. Not too much, too on the nose. And, uh, we'll come back. We can always change everything. And then this will be cool. And then we got right here. Did we move one from down here. Oh, there was this guy here. Okay, there we go. Now I would imagine there's like little islands, like lots of little, little ones here. So expect with like tiny one-man islands. I'll just leave it like that. For now, let's see how far we can zoom in. We need to be able to zoom in pretty far. Uh-oh, this might not be high res enough. Uh-oh. That sucks. I should have been like doing it like this scale and I could zoom in real far to draw my little civilizations all right let's see if I can't just make it bigger and then sharpen it hopefully that would be all right that doesn't look too bad and then you zoom in and then sharpen 
Smart sharpen. Why does it look so chunky? Why does it look so chunky, you guys? This is super boring. I know, I know. I don't know why this doesn't seem to be doing anything. Let's just do it. Whatever. That's kind of annoying. Oh, I've well, we got an idea. Alright. No trick of the trade. So I've selected this, so I'll select the inverse. I'm going to make this disappear. I'm going to do a new layer, and then I'm just going. Fill it in with the paint bucket tool, and it's still not still all annoying. All right, well, I'll just have to fix it with the um, eraser tool, I guess. I'll go back and redo all my beautiful work. But that's cool. It'll make it awesome. So let me make sure I'm at a high enough resolution. If I want to draw a little, like a little tiny peek here. Maybe even smaller than that. Can I do any smaller than that? Alright, that does look like a pretty good resolution. I'm going to zoom out. Oops. Alright. So make sure you got a good resolution going on, you guys, if you're working on your computer. So let's start off with the first, the first part of it, which was that central civilization. And so... I would imagine that there would be an awesome temple right on the edge of the volcano mouth where like with even like lava flowing out of it that would be sick so let's do that this is what I meant about erasing out the edges to get another sharp again so that would just be an extra little step so a temple of some sort I don't think I'll spend too much time designing it because I need to figure out their, like, um, what's it called? Their architecture and stuff, and that's a whole other thing I'll have to do research. I'm thinking, like, the Cambodian temples would probably be a good starting place. But for now, I'll just put some weird structure to indicate that there is some kind of temple like that. And that's supposed to be lava. I gotta zoom out to make sure this actually looks like something. Yeah, it does. So, um. Alright, yeah, I'm not gonna get too into this, but I want it to actually look like a building. Alright, whatever. That's fine. And then, there's got to be a village somewhere down at the bottom, so I'm guessing there's going to be like a windy path. So I'll actually go ahead and mark it. And it goes all the way down to this village right here. And let's represent the villages. I think the villages are all going to be jungle. So that's the other thing. I've got to draw a ton of jungles. So I'll show you guys how, at least for now, my jungle drawing method. Okay. So if you've seen my other videos, you've seen the forests. The forests basically, and it's just a very slight variation on the forest. And I think it works. So, so forest is just like this with these. Okay, and you just keep going. So much easier to do by hand. I'm gonna have to figure out, like, a, make a custom brush or something that does this. Alright, so that's the basic forest, and then you just keep going. So, a rainforest. I like to do. Okay, and then they're longer, so first off, these are taller. And I don't do any of the triangle ones, I don't think, for the rainforest. Okay, so then you end up going like this. Is the 
but they're going to be slightly some taller parts. This is hard to do. I have a little Wacom tablet so it's zoomed out. Let's try zooming in and see if I can do it better. Alright, so let's make a little brush. I don't know why it looks so fuzzy. Alright, so we're doing this. We've got two trees like that. And I know it looks really like crummy now, but if you did a whole forest, you know, it would blend in. Alright, so let's see if this is actually works. Is that how I used to do it? Hmm. Hmm, I think this is more like it. Maybe where you have a little bit of... Every once in a while you just throw in a... a tree popping up above the canopy. Does that look rainforesty to you guys? And then there's also these trees, but... I think it's too small to... Let's see. Alright, we're discovering stuff together, you guys. Like a... Uh, Alright, let's put some villages in here and talk about, and kind of think about. So maybe I'll put their villages on stilts because you don't want the bugs getting into your hut. You really don't. Trust me, fellas. So that could be a village symbol. Let's just leave it for now. No, I don't like the top board. Let's make it more like a straw, -y. a straw or a, like a palm frond type top. All right. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this for now, and we're gonna place some villagers around. So this is the village that mainly supplies these guys in their temple, and it's probably a pretty big village. So let's actually make another one over here. And this one I'm gonna put a little a little wall around. Cool. And that's gonna kinda denote that it's a little more substantial than say this guy who we will place we just leave them right there? Sure, let's leave them right there. And you know what? He needs a rubber. Coming by this place. So one thing is to think about is that rivers go from the high ground to the low ground. So mountains to the sea. And now that this is split off, maybe um, this land mass has kind of sunk on this side. So let's say that this side is the low mass now. And the other thing that's cool about this idea now that I think about it is that since the um, land could have shifted like that, so suddenly there might be dry riverbeds in like uh, ghost towns where there was like one right next to a river, but now the river has dried up. And usually rivers don't split too much like this, but I'm going to say since there was some crazy cataclysmic event in this fantasy world, I want my river to split, so I'm going to do that. I guess it's like in the Delta area, but it'll probably be a little different if that's the case. And, um, yeah, so how can I denote, like, a dry riverbed? Maybe there was, like, a big one that went, oh, that went through this town, but now it's dried up. Or it's not as raging. It used to be, like, this really big river. And now it's just, like, a, a trickling stream. And so this town that once had a big wall and was, like, the bustling metropolis of this area is now... Uh, a shell of its former self probably can't support such a big population and these guys, maybe they were a humble city and now they're gone so um should I give them a wall? not yet, not yet. Let's, not, let's not give them a wall yet alright let's place a few more villages and I should give these villages names but I'm not sure about the naming convention yet if I want to go like, 
I don't know, like African sounding names or East Asian sounding names or something completely different. Or Southeast Asian, I mean. Alright, so there was a couple villages. Let's say this was like one of the main areas where where people lived. And maybe there was a village that fell into the ocean. And so, and there, so there were three, but now there's just two. And what if this part came up? So this part is a is a big cliff face while this is a this gradually goes down into the water. So they've they find it difficult to come over there also because the seas, I don't know if I mentioned this, but the seas are raging. So um they can't cross them in their in their previous tech with their previous technology, which was more catered to pretty pretty good weather, calm seas, calm predictable seas. By raging, I mean like giant waves and unpredictable currents and uh, whirlpools, all everything, everything. Like uh, what's it called, Pirates of the Black Waters or something? So these guys are cut off. I wish. See, I would do this to show that it's you know it's raised off. I that these thick. Uh, it, well, there's no like how it's so straight on this one. Anyways, we can come back and refine that. But let's say that that side is sticking up, as you can see now. Let's give another part poking out so that we can uh, make that even more clear with like the whole coast. All right. Cool, cool. Now, I won't go too much longer, I don't think, because it take forever to build this whole place out. But I'm getting some great ideas, thinking out loud like this, and uh, thinking, thinking that we can build out a little more. So let's talk about these guys. They're now disconnected from here. Maybe these two have, like, um, you know, they're two different families or something. And one of them want, would, would have wanted to stay loyal to these evil empire. And the other one has always hated the evil empire. So now that they're stuck on an island together, they like, you know, there's bad mojo between them. And especially the evil empire ones, they're like, oh, maybe this is our chance to start our own evil empire. So we got to enslave the other guys so that, um, you know, so we can build some cool temples or whatever we want to do with our, with our slave labor. So the lava pours down here. Maybe there's, what if there's like a lake of lava? I don't even know if that's geographically sound. Lava would have to go venturing to the ocean, you'd think, or else it would build up. But that's the, that's the trick. That's the, what's it called? The mystery of the lake of lava. I'll just stretch these out so you can see it more, but that's going to be the lake. I'll just have to make it red or whatever. And um, it never fills up. It just, just mm, it's pretty. So there should be another temple down here. And they're like, you know, some mythology about the high temple and the low temple. Each need something. And they're twin temples. Maybe there's, tw uh, oh, maybe the there's like twin twin deities. Is it deities? I think. Um, the 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 preacher, the demons they worship. They're two twins, or brother and sister could be cool. And one is down here, and the other one's up there. So I'm just, I'll just do this. I don't know. It doesn't look like anything that's really bothering me. So I'm gonna have to do a lot of study on um, how to draw. You know, like simplified kind of icon type buildings. And then do a whole episode on that, or integrate it into a future episode. When I do the Egyptian civilization, which is based on the Egyptians, I'm going to want to draw a lot of monuments like this and stuff, so. Um, Alright, whatever. I'll have to just remember. This is mostly for note-taking and world-building for now. So, um, so let's say there's a jungle in between them. Oh, is this how I did it? I put these, and then just a couple... Uh, 
Never know. This is terrible. Man, drawing all these trees, I think I'm going to have to switch to doing this by hand. And then I won't be able to use the tectonic plate method and cool stuff like that. So it's a trade off. Maybe I can figure out a better way to do trees. If you guys have a cool way of doing trees you think looks good. I know there's this method where you kind of like outline a whole area. And then you do like just the stocks like that. Maybe add a couple of these. I'm thinking for a rainforest, would it work to just. Maybe I'll have to do that. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. We can imagine that most of this is pretty much covered in jungle. And so, um, so we decided that this whole continent is tipped upwards. So this guy has. You know, we'll have to do this on this whole side. Um, what else? So we've got some villages. Let's draw some more village up. Uh, you know, maybe what if this whole top part? No, this would have been part of the empire. But I'm thinking like the far top was like the savage lands or something. Like there's some one. Or maybe this whole eastern area. And there's like some mythical beasts. Oh, this is cool. So there's some myth mythical beasts, like some spirit. You know, some like evil, possibly metaphysical, you know, spirit creature. Because it's like the world of D&D, &D, so you got ghosts and stuff. But maybe it's like half ghost, half alive, or, or changes or something. I don't know, some crazy thing lives in this forest area on this side, and this, these were both connected. And so this village was kind of like the ward against it. There were two villages that were the wards against it. This one was, uh, you know, more well established, and they also used to mine ore from the mountains, so it was a pretty big village. And let's say, you know, there's a path that goes here comes through here and uh, I guess you, there's probably like a bridge that goes over the lava and connects back over here so they can meet up um, and this one used to be connected up here but these guys were like the guerrilla special ops troops and they would they didn't have the defense but they were like the most brave and skilled warriors you see so um so now they're isolated on this big old island with these creatures. And of course, you know, the jungle's going to expand. They don't have all the slave labor to keep cutting it back. And it's going to take over their little hut. And they're going to be in trouble, man. So the question is, do these guys go ahead and try to save them? I mean, it doesn't make sense. These guys have to get back, but the seas are just as deadly as a forest, and at least they know the perils of the forest. You see what I'm saying? Let's have like this part coming up. So that's another little group of hardcore dudes. I would want to play a campaign where I'm one of those characters. That sounds cool. All right. So, uh, so this part we said. Oh, what happened to these mountains? Are we gonna use them? No, I think we got enough going on. Let's not add more stuff. Let's not do that. What we could add would be like a couple little islands, for sure. Like that. And, uh... There. Okay. So that's good. So we finished with this area. I like this. We got some good stories going on here. 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 We got that kind of fleshed out. Um, why don't we just make things easy on ourselves and say that this was also part of that jungle area, like this whole, but then this area here, maybe that's clear of jungle, and this was like the agricultural portion, so all the rivers used to flow this way, or there was like a huge, like a, like a huge river here, let's say it was just huge, this was connected though, so there's a huge river, 
Maybe like that. Maybe, maybe it's the only one left now, but it's not quite as, as, as luscious as it was before. Let's see. And um, so this land was like irrigated and used for cultivating. Yeah, there's some other tributary river like that. All right. It was used for cultivating awesome stuff. Food. Okay, cool. So we got that idea. And maybe there's just little villages scattered throughout here. Let's say rather than any major settlement. The closest major settlements is this one. And then this guy right here. So that's where all the food would be funneled to. Mostly here. To be stored in the temples. That could be an interesting plot point. Like, oh, maybe this temple sinks into the lava. And the cataclysm and this one falls in, so now they're ruins. They're just the ruins of the temple. And it's supposed to be like haunted and stuff. Alright, man, we got some great adventuring ideas. So up here, we could have maybe more untamed jungle and maybe some tribes that always resisted. Or maybe I'll just make it much, much bigger. Oops. Um, I'm loving the ideas. I'm loving them. Map drawing skills. Not loving it. Not loving it. All right. Anyways, so this will be more of a world building series because there's clearly not enough time to sit here and draw a map. And even if I had the time, I don't think I would sit here and just be like boop, 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 for ten hours. All right. Cool. So let's say that this kind of area as well is more like jungle, but it's not, it doesn't have like the evil spirit, evil giant, maybe there's some giant creatures in here, that would be kind of cool. Or like an octopus, like a land octopus, that's just really savage and intelligent, and they hunt in packs like velociraptors. Yes, definitely land octopi that land, that hunt in packs live in these forests. There's all sorts of deadly creatures. I mean, that's what I'm trying to get across, if you haven't noticed. So on this side, though, I mean, we still got some deadly creatures. You, you find some land octopi, uh, perhaps, on this side, but definitely much more rare. Um, but, because um, all the jungles are pretty much interconnected. But uh, on this side, there were the rebel tribes that didn't want to conform to the way that these guys were going. And not necessarily that they were better, but they just, like, better as in morally that they were good, like they were freedom fighters or something. But no, they were they were just as savage in their own ways, okay? And, um, and no one, and after the cataclysm, no one knows what happened to them. So they're called the Lost Tribes. Some think they still exist. And even before the cataclysm, they weren't... People didn't know. They were like the Neanderthals. They were like, are you human? Are they not? You know? Maybe they're even ape-like, like they're hairy. I don't know. I don't think so. But uh, maybe all that is just mystery and legend. Alright? So all these places, so these are going to be the Lost Lands. And, uh, oh, we got to have dinosaurs. Oh, my gosh. Alright, and this whole place is populated by dinos, too. So we got the octopi. The, the octopi and the dinos are kind of like the primordial wars. Like the the octopi, i got to come up with a good name for them, and the dinosaurs, they fight each other. The octopi taste delicious, and they're large, and if you kill a whole pack of them, but the octopi are super intelligent. And they'll, like, they're, you know, they're getting battles with raptors and stuff, and humans might get caught in a cross, crossfire. And even though, like, the octopi, they're not as big as a T-Rex or whatever, They'll get you, man. They'll get you, because they... You'll see. You'll see. I'm going to have to develop those. They might even be little Chibu octopi characters. I don't know if they'll be that humanoid. We'll see. So let's just say that these are all these dinosaurs. And then there's one... There's got to be a temple to some dinosaurs, man. Dino temple. Because that'll be the other. So there are two tribes. The tribe of the... Of the uh, volcano deity. And the... The tribe of the, uh, you know, of the dinosaur. Yeah. 
and then they're on this plateau. I think that'll be sick. So there's this crazy plateau. I don't know if you've seen this. I forget where it is in South America. Um, let's see. Hold up. I don't know if I just go. What? This one. What is this place? I don't know, man, but that's a real place. And it's just a crazy plateau. So there's a crazy plateau where the pterodactyls and other flying dinosaurs. Please list your favorite flying dinosaurs in the comments below. And you better list three or more. I said favorites, not favorite. All right. I don't know why I'm being annoying. Alright, so there's this dino plateau. And that's how they've always escaped. So they're like, no one can get to them because if you try to come up the side, like they have steep cliff paths and stuff, but they'll just throw stuff down at you and shoot lightning and stuff because they have magic powers. This is the world of Chibu and throw fireballs. So super hard to infiltrate the dino fortress. So there's all little civilization up here living their lives they don't need stilts because there aren't very many insects at that high altitude and um, they're living their lives is pretty cold too so and uh, yeah that's it and the the jungles down below they rarely venture in there they have their own like agriculture and stuff it rains tons and there's probably some mountains you know around them I think the plateau is just as high as the mountains, if not higher. Maybe it's higher. That's why it's so mysterious. People are like, what? It's almost more volcanic. Maybe they've got their own volcano. That's why they're not too impressed by the... Um... Now, there's a lot. There's a little volcanoes, but this one's just crazy. And there's a volcano lake. Alright, I think that's going to do it. Do we need to say anything about this island? We can leave this island open-ended for DMs to create their own awesome stories or to uh, just have unexplored lands, you know what I'm saying? And I think that's going to be it. Thanks for joining me and creating the Jungle People's Land. I'm excited to smash this into the other seven kingdoms and see what, what becomes of it. I don't even think I mentioned this is for a comic which will later become a monastic multiplayer online RPG. That's right. Keep your socks off. That's the expression. And until next time, peace, God bless, and stay fantastic, everyone.